you're looking at what's left of a 1939 gram shark nose, abandoned in the desert region of Arizona. Maybe you've seen this picture or one like it while doing a Google search. We decided to track this shark down. We're not only going to show you this shark nose gram, but we're going to show you the journey that took us to this location. She may be behind bars. Join us as we travel some of the back roads of Arizona to find the shark that got away. A chance search on Google turned up, of all things, a shark nose gram. The particular picture allowed us to identify where it was actually taken. We decided to take a car trip in our Pontiac Solstice and see if we couldn't find the shark nose right here in Arizona. This is part of our beginning of our trip coming into Superior, Arizona, a beautiful little town that was once related very heavily in the mining industry. Nowadays, it's just a nice desert town. As you can see, a lot of things in the downtown are closed, but the buildings seem to be in pretty good repair. Here we've gone back on the highway, and if you ever get the chance, this particular drive from that wonderful little town to Miami and Globe is absolutely beautiful and it's worth the time to take it if you're ever in the area. You're seeing just a few of the highlights as we head our way to Miami, the home of the shark in question. Very, very enjoyable, incredible scenery. Not a lot of traffic either. This happened to be done on a Sunday afternoon in this part of Arizona, which is much lower than our altitude, it is downright gorgeous and just Beautiful, beautiful day. Here we're coming into Miami. We had no idea at all where the car was. So our first thought was to go to what was downtown Miami. This is once a very big uh, mining town. It still has mining associated with it. But as you're going to see, most of downtown here isn't really in use, but you're going to get to see some of the old buildings, etc. As we're looking for the vehicle right now. No idea where it is, the, other than it's in this town. And logical assumption, maybe somewhere on the main street, since it looked to be a fairly old building. But as we're going to find out, we were wrong. But it's interesting to look on the street and even notice on the left-hand side, we just passed by, I believe, a Model A. As you can see, really, a lot of the downtown, there's plenty of vehicles around, but a lot of those buildings really don't look like they're in use. Turning the page there, we've decided, well, it wasn't in the downtown. Let's go to the main highway, and there it was. We found it on the opposite end of town, and we found this old gas station that's used as soda pops, and I'll say that somewhere along here, soda pops antique store. And that happens to be the location of where the ground picture was taken. There's a soda pop antiques. Inside that building after a while you'll see a lot of interesting old items. Out front here you see some really cool old mobile gas and the signs, the little cafe, and it isn't just the shark here. You start looking around and there's all kinds of other items. And there's our quarry, the shark, in the yard with the bars holding it in. This turns out to be a place that's owned by a man who used to work for a government entity in the state. No, don't know his name offhand. He was not there that day, but we got to talk to his 
a mechanic friend who comes down and works on his cars in the winter and he lives up north in the summer and he'll come down here work on these he even works with the owner sometimes on them the owner used to be involved with a car club and uh, heavily involved and has actually restored some cars but as you'll hear a little bit later I think he's got more than he'll ever get done which is probably what a lot of us with old cars have here we're looking at the Graham Shark this turns out to be a model 96 and there are some real dead giveaways as we get along in the video where we'll point out why it's model 96 and you can see as it's panned here there's a lot of stuff here and it's just something you really want to see and we were just given free reign to walk around and look around by this gentleman who helps out the owner of restoring vehicles and he's got some rather interesting taste now there's a restored one he keeps covered up there's a Henry J he used to be very heavily involved with Henry J's and I don't know if technically the man told us it was a Henry J club or if it was a Kaiser Fraser club he was president of but he was heavily into Henry J's as well as a numerous other vehicles as you can see around the area and plenty of interesting old items not just antiques for houses etc buildings but a lot of antique items that relate to petrolania or in other words petroleum and uh, various items used in gas stations etc to work on fix or take care of your automobiles in the past and your trucks and that building in the back which you won't see a lot inside is full of many 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 different things and projects that this gentleman has and recently he has started according to what we're going to find out shortly sell some of the items so you're going to hear a little bit of information from when i'm talking to this gentleman roughly 70 years old mechanic that works with the owner in the next section of the video has this um, this boss on the side and the boss set up on the side okay. down in here is right off not currently attached okay oh, that look boss at that. setup wow. is okay. where you'd put a supercharger if it were a supercharger Ooh. and then it would be in model 97. That motor looks rebuilt so it's an all painted up generator too i wonder if that's rebuilt the engine might be rebuilt you want to check the oil be. so Now, having looked at the car this much and a little discussion on it, I've easily determined, as you saw, this is Model 96 because of the six-owner without the supercharger. 
and I was given free reign to look around and tell that steering wheel that is a non uh, custom steering wheel more likely be used on a 96 but you uh, you could have done a 97 without the fancy custom interior inside here the owner who I later talked to trying to see if we could buy this car turns out that he claims that in that car and all those boxes everything chrome has been replayed for the car I couldn't tell you that but it's sure not the way I would have stored it but maybe that's true it's also got a 1940 grill there and it rather looks like an awful lot of stuff is in the car it did appear even that it had a radio at one time now you're going to get a little tour in the antique area showing all kinds of things everything from toys to a beautiful stove to popcorn wagon just quite an eclectic number of things but apparently according to the uh, mechanic friend of the owner he has a lot more than this and he continues to gradually sell it off largely because he's been doing that for a living to an extent but also because he's getting up in years and starting to sell the various items. There you see a very interesting safe that is in the store. Many of these things apparently can be purchased. We have no idea what the prices are, what he would ask, or if it's a make offer type thing. The only thing we were honestly interested in on the day was to really look around all the cool stuff and of course we came for the shark to see if it existed. And then once we saw that car there, we thought, boy, that'd be a nice car to pick up and maybe do or find somebody that might be interested in completing it. Although the owner told me absolutely he intends to complete it, I'd be somewhat surprised if he did. There's a Southwind heater display that was there. Very interesting. Never saw one in person, only saw that in pictures. As you see, many other interesting old items this is the inside of the gas station itself, the gas station building. And you can see all these things that he's got that might be possible to purchase. And as I said, the 70 year old mechanic tells us there's probably a lot more than what we're seeing here that he's got stashed in other places and brings to this location. But it isn't the type of place where you walk in and the guy's going to be hanging around, apparently, either. So it's treated different than that sort of business, and it's probably more of a hobby business this day and age. We've headed over into the Globe area, which is probably what we would call the richer of the two towns, even back in the day. And Globe Miami area is usually referred to as both towns quite frequently because they're very close together. And there's a lot, a lot of heavy duty mining that has gone on in this area. Copper mining is basically what they've done. Arizona being the copper state. Shortly in here, we will see uh, at some point the railroad a couple of times and that's the Arizona Eastern Railroad which is a short line that looks like it's owned today by the GNAC and Wyoming I may be saying the first name wrong and that is a 
a short line uh, holding company based on a short line out of, I believe, New York. This is an over 200 mile uh, railroad that happens to have two branch lines, one of them coming up to Globe, Miami, and trackage rates over the Union Pacific connecting to two branch lines together, and that trackage rates is in southern Arizona. So the railroad still operates today as a functioning, what they would call short line. And here we come up, you're going to see right there, you actually get to see the bridge in downtown Globe. So you kind of see where the train runs over it. It'd be very interesting for a rail fan probably to follow that railroad and see what all you could see and photograph. Hey, Arizona seems to, for such a big state with not that many people in the past, have several interesting short line railroads operating it. What we're going to do now is we're going to head home. We decided to go a completely different way. And we head home via Roosevelt Lake. It is probably the prettiest single total drive we've ever taken in the state of Arizona. We would strongly recommend going from Globe up towards Payson via Roosevelt Lake as one of the prettiest drives we've ever taken in our lives. Give it a try.